And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo. And these are the staples that I put in my mono white decks. And again, I call this templates. This is a mono white template. That's the term that I use. It just really helps me when I'm building decks. Again, I'm, I'm not gonna go over the whole thing. I did my mono green template already. That was the first in this series. Go check that out. I go a little more in depth into what this actually means in terms of me for deck building. So that'll give you a bit more of a description for that if you're not sure exactly what's going on here. I did get a little bit of pushback in the last video where people were like, I didn't expect this from this channel because I usually talk about avoiding staples and playing the more fringe stuff. But as I answered a few people in that video, you're going to put staples in your deck no matter what. That is really unavoidable. I mean, there are just certain cards. And again, Beast Within was the great reference there. For me, that's one of the best removal spells in the entire format, maybe the best. So if I'm playing a green deck, at all, I'm going to put it in there, especially if I'm playing a mono green deck. I don't see any reason not to put that in there, right? So for me, this is a deck building guide a little bit. And, you know, a lot of channels will make deck building guides to help newer players sort of figure out which cards they should be putting in their decks. It's way too generalized, in my opinion, most of them. So I'm breaking it down into a lot of different videos. I have lots of lands videos for people to check out to see what kind of lands they should be playing. And these are the staples or the core of the deck that when I build a deck, I start with this, right? I call it a template because I start with this and then I build the rest of my deck on top of it. It's usually about 30 cards. 30 cards is not that much, right? If you have 30 cards in your deck, that leaves a whole lot of room for a lot of the other stuff to be putting in there. So we're gonna start out this one with what white does best in my opinion, and that is removal. And I got a lot of cards to talk about here, and they're not necessarily gonna go in all my decks, okay? There always is wiggle room here, of course. Austere Command has, for pretty much since the start of me playing this format, been my favorite board wipe. Six mana is kind of a lot, I guess. But like I say all the time about board wipes, the longer you wait in a game, the more stuff you're going to hit with it, right? I don't think I want to cast a board wipe on turn four. Not really a whole lot is happening. I mean, how many creatures are in play in a commander game on turn four? Typically not a lot. That's why I don't play cards like Wrath of God and Day of Judgment. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, a cheaper board wipe means you can cast the board wipe and then play something afterwards, which gives you more of an advantage. But I think just being able to completely blow out your opponents is a good enough advantage for me. And Auster Command, being able to choose artifacts, enchantments, creatures with mana value three or less, four or greater is such a massive advantage for you already. And again, if you're in an artifact theme, now I can not pick artifact. If I'm an enchantment deck, now I can avoid picking enchantments, but blow out my opponent who's playing an artifact deck. If I'm in a deck with lots of small creatures or big creatures or whatever the advantage is for me, I can pick that. I really, really love this. And despite the unbelievable amount of fantastic board wipes we've gotten in the last year, I really think Auster Command is still my favorite. Now, of course, Farewell, which just came out, probably is now an auto include for me as well. So Auster Command and Farewell, I think I probably will be end up putting in all my mono white decks for sure. Farewell, of course, is Exile. You also get the modal thing as well. Also, you can change choose all of them getting all artifacts creatures enchantments and graveyards wow that's really good and also i love the fact that you have that graveyard hate option which is something that austere command does not have so advantages for both of them but ultimately i think i would put both in my deck cleansing nova is one i used to put in all my decks because i just love the option of i destroy all creatures or artifacts and enchantments it's gotten pushed out i, I now have taken cleansing nova out of all of my decks. It's a great card still. And again, it's five mana, so it is a little bit cheaper. Hollowed Burial is another one that I like a lot. And again, it depends on what you're doing. Like Hollowed Burial, I still have in my Dragonlord Dramoka deck, okay? And I know I'm talking about mono white here, but I'm just using this as an example where maybe Hollowed Burial can be better. It puts creatures on the bottom of libraries, right? So it's really great against Indestructible, Hexproof, Dies Triggers. It avoids Dies Triggers, right? So it could be really good against Graveyard decks. So it can be better than an Austere Command in those specific situations. The reason I have it in my Dragonlord Dramoka deck is because I have a couple of creatures like Painter's Servant, which are really important to that deck. So if I'm forced to cast a board wipe, I can tuck my Painter's Servant on the bottom of my library and I have tutors so that I can go get it again. So it can also be good there as well. 
Winds of Abandon was another one that I used to put in all my mono white decks for a while, but has been pushed out. I mean, there's so many. Buy Invitation Only and Vanquish the Horde. Again, it really depends on what you're doing. There's so many fantastic options for white board wipes in the format that really has to fit specifically with what you're doing. That's, for me, at the end of the day, the decision on which ones I'm going to put in. Probably, though, Austere Command and Farewell are sort of the go-tos when I first start building a deck. Put those two in, and then maybe I'll switch from there. Getting to the more targeted removal, of course, Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares. They're going to go in all my mono white decks. There's some discussion about which one is better. I think Path is a little bit more expensive. Prices always fluctuate, obviously. For me, I think I like Path to Exile better in a commander game, and I will tell you why. Because giving your opponent an extra land, and again, I'm not going to use that removal spell on a creature that they play on turn two, like you might do in modern or another format in commander you're going to use your path to exile or your swords on a big creature creature that's probably going to kill you like a blightsteel colossus right so if a blightsteel colossus is coming at me i path to exile it my opponent gets a basic land no big deal swords to plowshares is going to give them a whole lot of life right and that can make a big difference in the long term of the game so for me i actually prefer path to exile over swords i think in most situations i would rather give my opponent a basic land than a whole bunch of life and of course generous gift i you know i talked about Beast Within being probably the best removal spell in the format. Generous Gift is also there right with it, obviously, because it's essentially the exact same card, but in white. Just being able to hit any permanent, I just think is so incredibly important. Again, I just lost another game the other day because my opponent had a Glacial Chasm and I couldn't get it off the table. And Generous Gift can do that, right? It's not just creatures that are going to be problematic in a game. It's going to be artifacts, it's going to be enchantments, it's going to be lands. I just think it is so important to have versatile removal, being able to hit any permanent is so crucial in a commander game because you never know what your opponents are going to be doing. So generous gift for me is an absolute auto-include if my deck is white. I also still really like Return to Dust and Unexpectedly Absent. Return to Dust, you know, there, there's some debate over whether there's better options. I, I would say 99% of the time I've ever cast this spell, it was on my main phase, so I could hit two things. I like that it's Exile, I like that it's Artifact or Enchantment, and I like that it's an instant, even though you're not going to typically cast it that way, but you could, right? If you have it in your hand and your opponent all of a sudden throws a Blightsteel Colossus in play again and is is about to swing and kill you with it, you can, at instant speed in response, exile it. So you're only going to hit one thing, but it is still an option, right? Even though you're not going to typically use that spell as an instant, it is still making it more versatile because you do have that option. And unexpectedly absent, again, I just find it to be very versatile. Not going to hit lands, but it's going to hit everything else. And typically for me, if I use this on my opponent's commander and tuck it like two or three cards deep, they're just going to put it in the command zone because they don't want to have to wait to get their commander back. They don't want to accidentally shuffle it into their deck you know when they crack a fetch line or something i've seen that happen a few times and also when they crack that fetch line you can do this in response that's another reason why this card is fantastic because sometimes tucking stuff into libraries can be a huge advantage you know just destroying it they can just get it back sometimes my opponent's about to search their library in response i can just for two white mana throw a very troublesome permanent into their library and it just gets shuffled away and they never see it again so i just like it it's kind of a fun interesting removal spell that i like to put in my white decks getting to the ramp and again something that i think white does pretty darn good i'll start with the mana rocks though arcane signet of course you know th this just goes in every deck i guess i don't play soul ring anymore in fact i only have two decks now with soul ring still in them haven't taken them out yet i might at some point they're both monocolored decks it's actually my abishon deck and my patron of the katsune deck that i still have soul ring in because they're two monocolored commanders that kind of cost a lot so i thought i would leave them in there might eventually take them out arcane signet is the other mana Mana Rock that obviously everyone just auto includes in all their decks. I think it was a mistake to even make this card. I think Wizards of the Coast has actually admitted that it was probably a mistake to make this card. It should have entered the battlefield tapped. It makes it a lot more fair because it just makes a card like Marble Diamond, for example, which I used to put in all my mono white decks, almost completely obsolete. I mean, you can still play it. I still play the Diamond series in some of my monocolored decks if I need more Mana Rocks. In mono white, I don't. I don't put a ton of Mana Rocks in my mono white decks because white does ramp relatively well. I like Worn Power Stone. I also like Liquid Metal Torque. Again, if I'm in a mono white, mono red, or mono green deck, Liquid Metal Torque is an auto-include. 
for me because those colors get rid of artifacts really well. And of course, you can turn any non-land permanent into an artifact. So it just makes all your artifact removal spells so much better. I really like Worn Power Stone. This, to me, is the fair version of Soul Ring. It has lost popularity a little bit in the format. I, I think turn three, I play my Worn Power Stone tap. And then on turn four, I can untap it and I got six mana. That seems pretty good to me. I also, again, I like Pearl Medallion in my Mono White decks. They are a little expensive. I try to put the medallions in all my Mono Colored deck. Reducing essentially the cost of almost all your spells is pretty darn good. Obviously, it's not ramp, but it's essentially sort of a mana rock. Getting to the actual ramp, though, Archaeomancer's Map, of course, and Keeper of the Accord. These are, in my opinion, the best Mono White ramp spells in the format. And again, in certain situations, I would say that Archaeomancer's Map is maybe not an auto-include for me. It's better in some decks and less good in other decks. It depends on what you're doing. Again, if you're in a blink deck where you're blinking creatures, maybe a stoic farmer is better because it has an ETB. That's another one I like a lot. You can foretell it on turn two, cast it the next turn, get your planes. I like that it's getting you a planes no matter what, right? A lot of these white cards that get planes depending on what your opponents are doing. This one's going to put it into play if your opponents have more lands than you. But if they don't, which does happen to me from time to time, you still at least get to put it in your hand. So I like that one a lot. So it sort of depends on what your deck is doing. I wouldn't necessarily put Archaeomancer's Map and Stoic Farmer and Keeper of the Cord in all my decks. Keeper of the Cord to me is the best because you're also getting that creature bump as well. That to me is the one that I would auto include in all my mono white decks. It can be really fantastic. I find there's always one person in a game that is ramping really hard and is going to have more lands than you for the entire game. So every single time that opponent has a turn, you get to go get a land out of your deck and go put it into play on their end step so keeper of the cord can be really fantastic that way i also typically put wayfarer's bauble and solemn simulacrum in my mono white decks typically i put both of these in all of my mono colored decks except green of course green doesn't really need the help with ramping so any other mono colored deck i usually put wayfarer's bauble and sad robot in there and i will also put weathered wayfarer in typically my mono white decks. Again, it does depend a little bit what you're doing, but where Weathered Wayfair can be particularly good is it gets any land, right? You pay one white and tap, search your library for a land card reveal it and put it into your hand. So that can be extra good in a deck where you have specific lands that you want to go get out of your library. So I, I typically will put Weathered Wayfarer in my mono white decks, but even more so if there's a specific land I want to get out of my deck. Moving on to something else that white does really, really well, which is protecting its own stuff. And Rebuff the Wicked is a card that I used to auto include in all my mono white decks, but Blacksmith's skill is starting to replace it. Now, again, it depends on what your deck is doing. If I really, really need the protection to protect my commander or some other permanent that I have that I don't want removed. So for example, again, my Dragon Lord Dramoka deck, even though that's not a mono white deck, I have both of these because I have a lot of very important pieces that I want to protect. Rebuff the Wicked, of course, is going to counter a spell that targets a permanent you control. Blacksmith's skill is just going to make that permanent have Hexproof and Indestructible, which in almost every situation is going to be better, right? Rebuff the Wicked's not going to protect against a board wipe. Blacksmith skill will. So it has really started to replace Rebuff the Wicked in a lot of my mono white decks. But again, I will sometimes play both of them. Protecting your face is always good too, right? Comeuppance and Settle the Wreckage are two that I typically put in all my mono white decks. Again, I just think these cards can be absolute blowouts, right? Your opponent swings with their whole team. Settle the Wreckage is going to get around just about any kind. Like it gets around Indestructible, Hexproof gets around everything. Unless your opponent has Hexproof, right? Because you're actually targeting the opponent. And come up and again is one that I just started putting in a lot of my decks because it protects against two of my least favorite win cons in the format, Crater Hoof Behemoth and Aether Flux Reservoir. It's fantastic against both of them. With the Crater Hoof, it will just kill all the player's creatures. And of course, you are perfectly fine. You're not taking any damage. And against an Aether Flux Reservoir, you just end up killing that player, which is a fantastic feel-good moment, let me tell you. Ghostly Prison, of course, is still, in my opinion, one of the best ways to protect yourself in a commander game. Game. And again, the game I just played with my patrons, I actually had a propaganda, which of course is the blue version because I was playing a mono blue deck. My opponent played a ghostly prison. So the two of us weren't getting attacked for a long, long time. The other guy was playing an aggro deck. So that means the fourth guy was getting the crap beat out of him. My propaganda got removed. So I played a mirror maid copying my opponent's ghostly prison because I could see how important that ghostly prison was going to be in the game. 
and it was. It was incredibly important. This card can be a huge game changer in a game if you even have just one opponent that is playing an aggro strategy because not only does it prevent you from getting attacked, but they need to attack, so they're going to attack someone else. So it's a double whammy for you. It's protecting you, and it's hurting one of your opponents, and all it does is just sit there, three mana, you don't have to do anything else, it just sits there and gives you advantage as long as it is on the table. I really like Redain, God of the Worthy, in my mono white decks, and man, you could put this guy in any deck. I mean, the front is good if you happen to be in the situation, right? Snow lands your opponent's control, enter the battlefield, tap, so if you, you know, have this in your opening hand, you happen to notice uh, you have a couple opponents playing snow lands, because a lot of people will just do that, you can play the front side, also non-creature spells your opponent's cast with mana value 4 or greater, cost 2 more to cast, which can be really, really good later in the game, right? That board wipe now, say that Oster Command, is now going to cost 8 mana, that's a lot. But typically I play the backside Valkmira Protector Shield, and that's why I think this card is extra good, because there is 4 different situations here on this card that can be protecting you from 4 different scenarios depending on what your opponents are doing. Particularly the backside, if a source an opponent controls would deal damage to you or a permanent you control, prevent one of that damage. So preventing damage to you and your permanents is great, especially if you're up against that goblin deck, right? And most of their creatures are going to be dealing you one or maybe two damage. A go-wide strategy that's really, really good against. It pretty much hoses a like Niv-Mizzet deck where they're going to be hitting you for one damage increments at a time. The second ability, even more so, whenever you or another permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless his controller pays one so again works great there also works great against that sort of storm off thing where maybe they want to cast a grape shot and they want to keep targeting you over and over again it's just such a huge advantage to have this card on the table either side for that matter of course whites are also great at protecting creatures and selfless spirit and guardian of faith are two of my personal favorites i've been putting selfless spirit in all of my decks since I, this card first came out i, I always love this card i love protecting my team. I, I play a lot of creature heavy decks. I hate getting blown out by board wipes. Guardian of Faith, of course, is a newer version of this, which is maybe better because it's phasing out. And I really like phasing because it protects against everything. Also, your opponents don't see it coming, right? The selfless spirits sitting on the table, your opponents know you have it. So they won't waste their board wipe, right? They're going to get the selfless spirit off the table before they cast their board wipe. Whereas Guardian of Faith can be a real blowout because it's in your hand and you're casting it with flash and phasing at all your creatures. So they're going to waste their board wipe, which can be extra good. Flawless Maneuver and Teferi's Protection, of course, also great. Of course, these are also kind of expensive, but if you got them, they're pretty fantastic. Again, the Flawless Maneuver play, where I don't have to pay for it because my commander's out, your opponents don't really see it coming, can be really advantageous, and Teferi's Protection, I mean, what needs to be said about that? If you can afford it, it should be in any of your decks that even have white at all. Obviously, in your mono-white decks, for sure, it just, again, can be such a huge blow. Not only does it protect against removal, it protects against combos and, you know, Sanguinate, whatever the scenario is, it's going to protect against almost everything. So it's going to go in all my mono white decks for sure. Let's talk about card draw, which white I think does fairly well. We got Esper Sentinel and Welcoming Vampire last year, of course. Great mono white card draw effects. Again, I will say that I don't think white needs any more help. We also have the artifacts, right? Don't forget, we don't actually need a card that's white to draw cards in our mono white decks. We can use artifacts as well, and there's lots of great ones there. Again, though, you know, it depends on what you're doing. Esper Sentinel is not an auto include for me. I have this in only one deck currently. I actually have found that I don't draw a ton of cards. You know, when I first was setting up for this video a couple weeks ago, I was like, yeah, Esper Sentinel, I think is probably going to go on all my mono white decks from now on. I've changed my opinion a little. It really, I find I don't draw cards off of it nearly as much as I thought it would. It can be extra good though. If you have a way to buff that power, it can be extra good. Your opponents are definitely not going to pay for it. I have it in my Denic deck because it is a one mana creature and that deck is really good at getting low mana value creatures out of graveyards so I can recur it. Welcoming Vampire, again, I do have that in some decks. I don't have it in all my mono white decks. It depends what you're doing. It can be really good in certain decks and in some decks you might play it and it might not do anything for you. How often are you going to be playing a creature with power two or less on your turn? I mean, yeah, it triggers on everyone's turn, but how often are you going to be playing a power two or less creature on your opponent's turns, right? Are you going to be doing that? Probably not. In a mono white deck, especially probably not. So yeah, it might fit. It might not. Again, there's lots of options here like Dawn of Hope. Are you gaining life? Lots of options in 
in white for drawing cards, but it really depends what you're doing in your deck. For me, the one auto include for drawing cards in mono white is Endless Atlas. This is a personal favorite of mine for a long time. Again, another card that if I'm in a mono color deck, probably not green though, I'm gonna be putting this in there. I think it's one of the best options for any mono color deck for drawing cards, just a two mana artifact. And pay two and tap to draw a card is great. You can only activate it if you control three or more lands with the same name, but of course that includes basic lands. So in a mono color deck, that should not be a problem at all. You should never have a situation where this is turned off. So just two mana and tap to draw a card is great. This goes in all my mono white decks and a lot of my other mono color decks as well. A couple other additions I like. Savine's Reclamation is one that I just love the value here i started putting this in all of my mono white decks two and a white sorcery return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield and of course that can be lands right that can be artifacts enchantments creatures you would be surprised how often that this will be coming in handy and then of course it has flashback as well which gives this added value and if you pay the four and a white you get to copy it so now you get two things out of your graveyard just a really fantastic value card and white yes can have sometimes a little bit of trouble in the value game and this is a great option for you so i've been putting it in all my mono white decks i've also been putting kabiri takedown and shajiri shelter in all my mono white decks now and a lot of other decks with white the mdfc lands it took me a little bit to warm up to them but i'm like yeah i think i should probably start putting these in more decks particularly in mono color decks right in my mono color decks i'm playing a lot more mdfc lands because these enter the battlefield tapped which is a little bit of a downside and then also they only tap for the one color of mana so i I don't know if I want to load up a two or three or four color deck with a bunch of these. Definitely in a mono color deck though, I think you can find room. And these two in particular are just ones that you're gonna always wanna use, right? Kabiri Takedown deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature Planeswalker, so it's a removal spell on a land. Shajiri Shelter, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn, so a protection spell on a land, right? Those are two things that you're always gonna be wanting to do in a commander game. Both of them at instant speed too. They're fantastic. I've been putting them in all my mono white decks and a lot of other decks as well that have white in them. They're my personal favorites out of all the MDFC lands. And speaking of lands, obviously I'm gonna be putting a ton of planes in my decks. Amiria the Sky Ruin is one non-basic land that I put in all my mono white decks. It is just such a massive advantage late in the game. And I find in a mono white deck, late game is usually a thing, right? For me, you know, the way I'm playing a mono white deck because mono white has so much removal, so it's easy to get rid of your opponent's stuff and also has a lot of protection. So it's harder for your opponents to stop what you're doing the game goes late, right? And you're probably not gonna be closing the game out quickly in a mono white deck anyway. So I always plan for the late game in my mono white decks and Amiria is so fantastic there, right? It's gonna enter the battlefield, tap, taps for a white, but at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control seven or more planes, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Obviously that's an incredibly powerful ability, can be really fantastic late in the game when of course you have a full graveyard. So for me, it's an auto include in my mono white decks. Core Haven is another one that isn't necessarily an auto include but is a really really great one i have a white lands video right i have my land series for anyone that's new to my channel where you can look at all the lands that are available to you to play in a white deck core haven is a personal favorite of mine just one in a white and tap prevent all common damage that we've dealt by target attacking creature this turn so it's sort of like a maze of it but also taps for mana so it's not going to be taking up a land spot like maze of it does Again, can be a real game saver, a little bit expensive, but if you can find room for it in your deck, it can be really great. And then of course the usual suspects with the colorless lands, right? Scavenger Grounds, you gotta have Graveyard Hate in your mono white decks. And Graveyard Hate is not that difficult in a mono white deck. White has lots of options for that, but of course having it on your land is just so easy to slot into your deck. You gotta have your Ghost Quarter, your Strip Mine, any sort of land destruction is an auto include in any deck for me. And again, probably gonna put a Command Beacon in my deck if I care about my Commander at all which typically in my decks i do command beacon goes in i think all of my mono color decks and a lot of my other decks as well so that is it for me that is my mono white template or the commander staples that i put in my mono white deck right it is the template that i use where here's what i'm starting with and because i build a ton of decks it just saves me a lot of time and again it saves me also from not forgetting some really important cards that are fantastic in white right that's another big part of this is not oh well i'm putting the same cards in all my decks like a generous gift for example why 
why wouldn't you put that in your deck, right? So I don't want to forget it. I don't want to forget to put a generous gift or a blacksmith scale or just a really, really fantastic mono white card in my deck. So having a template makes sure that I don't. But that is it for this video. What mono white staples do you guys play that maybe I didn't mention that are just auto includes for you? Let me know in the comments below, but that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in.